Hey, it's Sophie Student here, and today I'm going to showcase a snake game I will be creating in JavaFX. And this is the first version where I just have the very simple movement of the snake going, and I am able to add some tail parts. And as you can see, I have the very normal movement of the snake where the tail moves in the exact same way the head is moving. So if I go like up, down, round, the tail will just continue to follow. And when you have a longer tail, it will just continue to follow like this. At the moment, I can't lose the game. So I can hit the tail and I can hit the edge of the screen. But that will be fixed in the next version. So let's have a look at how it actually works. So firstly, I have defined that all my sizes of my head and my tail parts are 50 by 50. Which allows me to kind of work in a grid, even though it's not a grid. I then first create a rectangle, JavaFX rectangle, as the head, then one as the first tail, just right behind the head. I then get some positions, all is based on like the positions of the head. I have a direction, which is the enum, just some variable names of up, down, right, and left. I then save all my old positions of the snake head using a object I created as just simply contains an X position and a Y position. I then have an array list of my snake body parts. So I'm always able to like go through all the body parts and add the movement to all of them. I then save the game ticks, so how many times the game has been running, to be able to simply have a body part go move the way the snake head did X ticks ago. And of course I have an anchor pane and I have some uh, start buttons and some add buttons. And most importantly, the entire game loop works inside a timeline, which have a keyframe, which at the moment is running every 0 0.3 second. And then every 0 0.3 second, I'm calling this event, which is getting the current position of the snake head and saving it inside positions. We're then moving the snake head one time in the current direction. So either up, down, right or left. I'm then going through all the body parts and moving them to the position they need to be. So let's have an example. Head is moving one. The first tail part is moving to where the head was last time. The second tail part is moving where the head were two ticks ago and so on. So they're all moving X positions behind the head. And then of course we're adding one game tick. Then we are initializing, so the first thing that's running, we're just simply adding our snake head to the snake body. We are giving the snake head a color, which then the timelines run forever. We're starting the timeline, we're then adding our first snake body, and we're then adding both of them to the scene. Restart have not been implemented yet. Then we have our positions, which is very simply based if an event code that equals a key code so whenever i press w in this case and the direction is not down because if you're going down you can't go up then you're going like into yourself so if you're going let's say going right and you press w you're gonna be going up by changing the direction to up and so on and then whenever we're moving the snake it's simply checking what is the current direction and then based on the current direction we will be moving some direction some position so let's see if we're going right we would be moving the snake size to the x position direction so in this case we'd move, be moving 50 pixels inside the x direction so to the right and so on then whenever we're moving the tail we are just simply previously going through all the tail elements and then for each tail element we're getting the game ticks minus the tail number plus one so let's say we have the tail number one. So our first tail would be tail number one. So we'd have minus one plus one, zero. So we would get it zero game ticks after the tail, which in this case would be the last position. So the position before where the tail were just previously. And the first, the second tail part would be one, one behind the head. The first, it, it's a bit confusing actually. So the first tail part is moving to where the head were previously. And the next tail part would be moving to where the tail were 
not previously, but previously, previously. <laughs> I hope it kind of makes sense because it's it's a bit it can be a bit confusing. But just the basic understanding: we're saving all the positions of the tail head, and then we're moving it to the position it needs to be in. And then when we're adding a snake tail, we're just simply creating a new one. And in this case, I'm just spawning it on top of the head. And then whenever we're moving it, it will be moving to the position it's supposed to be. So let's see. When I'm clicking, you might see a black dot on top of the head. And, and then whenever one tick is running, so one game, of, one game loop is running, it would be moved to the correct position behind the snake. So this is my first version of the snake game. Created definitely not in the best way, but this was my own way. Just try creating it for fun to see how I would do it if I was supposed to do it now. And of course, I will leave a link down in the description to all the source code. So you can have a look at all this if you want, because it can be a bit confusing if you don't go through it by yourself and actually get it running and actually see what it does. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and wish you all a wonderful day.